Numbers chapter number 13, Numbers 13, verse 23, Numbers 13 and verse 23, the children of Israel, it's a somewhat familiar story of the Bible, but the children of Israel, of course, were in Egypt because of the story of Joseph, which brought them to Egypt to save their lives, and they were starving. They stay in Egypt from that point on 400 years, and they become the slaves of the Egyptians. Initially, they come in with Joseph, of course, and his, his father and the, and the brethren there, and they're given the land of Goshen. But as time went on over the 400 years they were there, they were pretty much slaves to the Egyptian people. As we know, the Egyptian people, and Moses came in, and he led them uh, out of Egyptian bondage through great miracles. And... They have now traveled away from Egypt. They, of course, they were, um, at, at the end of it, they were basically pushed out. They were given all kinds of spoil and animals, and they, they spoiled the country. People just wanted them gone because they were so uh, overwhelmed with the plagues that the Lord had sent. And, of course, the last straw was, uh, of course, for the armies, uh, after they had forced them out, the armies to be overtaken uh, in the sea and drowned. So it was a... It's a mighty miracles that they had experienced. Can you imagine being slaves to these people all this time and now all these people, your neighbors are just giving you all the stuff they have, just leave, leave us, but they're just giving them everything. And then they see the great miracles of, of, the, of the, the sea being parted. And so they've, they've seen all these things happen and we're quite somewhat familiar with that story. And we find then that they are traveling and they are having victories along the way. They're, uh, armies of Israel are winning these battles and of course the Lord is with them and so they've seen a mighty mighty work of God just throughout uh, their not escape but they're uh, leaving Egypt they come now and they have come to the promised land finally the land that the Lord had promised them I pick up the story in verse number 23 of Numbers 13. And they came unto the brook of Eskel and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bear it between, uh, two, upon two, uh, two upon a staff, and they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. The place was called Brook Eskel because of the cluster of the grapes, and the children of Israel cut down from thence. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran uh, to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told them and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us. Surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. And the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We will not be able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come down of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so, were we, uh, so we were in their sight. The title of the message is, the giants are too big for you too. The giants, they said the giants are too big for us. 
And the giants are too big for you too. They were stronger. Oh yes, it's a land of milk and honey. But they're stronger. They're of great stature. Cities are walled. They're very great. We think of Jericho when Joshua comes in. And we look like grasshoppers in their sight, and we, we feel like that in, uh, in ourselves. The giants turned them, honestly, into cowards. They were afraid. They have seen the mighty miracles of God as they escaped Egypt. They have seen the mighty miracles of winning victory before they got there, and now they go and they're at the absolute promise land. This is not, I mean, that's, that's what we know it as. That's what it is. It was promised to Abraham, and then all through the, the, uh, the patriarchs, the promises were made for this land, for them to take it. And finally, that day has arrived after all these years, and they finally are there in the promised land, and they go in, and the 12 spies come back and say, they're too big for us. They're too strong for us. We're too small in their sight, and we are too small for them. And we cannot win. We have one man, though, that stands up, of course, Caleb, and says we can win this fight. What a great man Caleb was. We had a dog. This is a stretch. We had a dog that we got from the Humane Society. And they said his name was Caleb. And I said, no, no, no. We're not naming a dog Caleb in our house. We'll change the name because this is a great hero of the faith. He's not going to bear such a name. It's a noble name. It's a great name. It's a great man that stood strong for the Lord and tried to lead the people and eventually uh, was an influence. And then a man, of course, that wound up in the, the land without going in and going into the, the uh, wilderness they quickly forgot their lives had been filled with miracles. Isn't that amazing how quickly we can forget what God has done and we can go in fear and thinking we can't go forward because it's individual lives. Sometimes in churches, we can't figure out how to go forward. The giants, they look at, churches are looking at insurmountable things that are going on in their church from the standpoint of sometimes the finances are just not able to sustain even the pastor. Sometimes you have all uh, situations in the church where, you know, the taxes are, are, of people now and, and all the expenses of gasoline and all these things are diminishing offerings in the church. And so there's things that happen that diminish a church's and they begin to think they can't make it and I think it's four churches a day that are closing because there's so much they just can't overcome to keep the doors open. And far fewer churches are being, uh, being started because it ju they just feel like they can't go any farther. Sometimes we quickly forget the lives that have been filled with mighty miracles. God delivered them from horrible bondage. He drowned the armies of Israel, uh, of Egypt. How quickly we can forget the, the good times and the victories and blessings. When we get to that point, that's this statement. They gave God no chance to prove himself. They gave God no chance. They never tried. They never went in. They just surrendered and they backed off. And unbelief and doubt has now stopped them. How quickly people can quit when times get tough. God had a victory in store for them. The promised land was indeed theirs for the taking, but they did not take it. They did not go in. They gave an evil report that convinced them that what these men saw and what they, what they were told of the land in spite of its great wealth perhaps, but certainly the crops were amazing. They looked at the damage potentially to all of their futures because of an evil report. Ten faithless men, ten, took down a nation for 40 years. Just ten. Gave an evil report, and there they were in the wilderness for 40 years. They never faced the giants. 
and they wound up in the wilderness 40 years. The rest of their life was merely an existence, wandering in the wilderness, never to experience any victory again. It was literally the end of the road for this nation and these people. Of course, we know those that were 20 and down that the Lord spared their lives and they came out and they did go into the promised land under the, the leadership of uh, Joshua. The message tonight is this, the giants of life are too big for you too. What was missing about them going in? They, they indeed were too small to beat these people. I mean, let's just face it, these were giants. I mean, they were just, they, they were outmanned. Everything about this land was impossible for them to take it. And so they basically were facing the realities of what the situation was and just came back to the people. And we call it an evil report, but honestly, I think it was a truthful report. In their eyes, what were they missing? They were missing God. And so when we, we see in our own lives, we, we have giants that come to our lives and indeed, we look at them and we say, I can't defeat this giant. And many times, I would tell you, I look at people's situations sometimes and, and you can almost agree with them. Brother Ken's been with this stroke now for 11 years. I, I, I'm, I'm not with him a lot, but I, I've been with him several times in situations where he was in bad shape at his house in hospitals. He's never defeated. Never, never saw him defeated. He had a spirit that was just like the spirit of Caleb, always on top side, always joking with the nurses, uh, always just a delightful man to be with, no, no matter what the conditions were in his life. In, in spite of the fact that, of what I would say is an impossibility to be happy in such a situation, yet he was. What, what, was it impossible? Yes. Was it, was it even, even for the standpoint of his precious wife, was it difficult for her? And, and he's seeing, uh, you know, the life that they're leading. And, and yet I find in them joy and happiness that, let's just face it, humanly speaking, is impossible. But yet we're seeing this couple that is always on top side. And I, I always love to go visit him because his attitude is always in victory not in defeat. Maybe soon ultimate victory is going to come for him. Only the Lord knows that. But I see in them an impossible situation. Many people just accept defeat. There's a place, was it, when was that in Harvey, that home for children? Harvey, Illinois. And after coming out of the situation that we were in with Clinton in, hosp in hospitals for so long, um, we found this place in Harvey that was a place for children, and, but all of these children had been abandoned by their parents, and the state of Illinois is taking care of them. And I would say of our country, God bless you, USA, to care for these children that nobody, nobody wants and nobody would care for. And when you go there, it's unimaginable. I really can't even explain it to you. These children are, because of brain injuries, these children are so twisted up and mangled. And, and just, it's because, and our son was similarly, except we, we were caring for him. So, but, but they would turn literally, and you'd, you can't imagine it, but they turn into pretzels. I mean, your limbs don't go these directions, but they eventually, because the brain is sending signals, to, there's no direction, and so they just, they just curl up in amazing ways. You go there on Christmas, guess who's not there? Their families. Just completely abandoned children. And you look at, look at these children. And their parents looked at these children. And, we, of course, we experienced it within the hospital we were in as well. But the parents look at these children, and they cannot handle it. It's too big. It's overwhelming. They can't face it. And you know what I would say to that? They're probably right. Why can't they? Because they don't have God. It's an impossible situation. They can't see how they can keep their sanity with, with a child that's hurt so badly. 
You're going to find all kinds of situations in life that they're going to be out of your control. And they're going to be beyond what you can imagine. And they're going to be situations that honestly can't be handled. They're too great. They're too strong for you. There's, there's all kinds of situations that happen in life. And it's not just physical situations. Sometimes it's just uh, relationships. There's all kinds of things that happen in people's lives. We see motorcycle accidents that just leave people uh, d greatly disabled. We see young people with, with drug addictions that just cannot seem to win, and they just keep falling back into the trap because they just can't, they just can't beat the giant. Are we upset with them? No, our heart breaks for them. People on the streets, because the giant was too big, and it truly is, without God. Sometimes we look at people and we see how their lives are falling apart, and it's no wonder they are, because they don't have God. Children that are being boarded by the thousands, and I'm way beyond that. My ladies, they just can't see any help. They can't figure out how they can have another child, how they can bring in a child, how can they care for the child. And so they feel hopeless and unable to keep the child without God. Millions of Americans are chained, living in fear and failure, listening to evil reports without God. In your life, you're going to face giants you can't defeat. You are. You probably will. At some point, all of us will. But understand something. Those giants that you can't defeat, it's true that you cannot. There's, it's not within you to do it, but it is within God to do it. It's within you. Have God and you have God in your life, and all of a sudden, those impossibilities that could never be managed, humanly speaking, they're out of the realm of possibility that you can maintain. You can maintain your emotional strength, your physical strength, and overwhelming things. Many, many years that Aaron has is, is, is cared for Ken, and just, um, I can relate to it, but what I mean by this is loading up your car sometimes, just you know, taking a wheelchair and putting it in your car or your, whatever your vehicle is. And people would always want to help you. And, and Tyler, he honestly say, thanks, but let me just do it myself. Because it, it, it takes an ordeal that you're used to or it makes it an ordeal out of something that you just do very rapidly. And I uh, so many times have tried to help Aaron with the wheelchair and you just, you just got to get out of the way. And God has given her the strength. God's given her just great, great love and, uh, and a lovable man to share her life with. Be in special prayer for her, please. We're going to face giants. They're unimaginable and they're too great. But they are winnable. They are things that we can do through Christ. Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up against this people, for we are well able to overcome it. Caleb knew something that the others weren't taking account for, and that's an almighty God that they just saw doing miracle after miracle after miracle in their lives to bring them into the promised land and to get them to that point. And so... Caleb wasn't seen as insurmountable because he'd already seen the miracles and the promise of God that they would go in. So for Caleb, it was, let's go. We're well able with God. We're well able. Chapter 14, verse 22, if you still have your Bible open. Because all those men... My chapter, yes, chapter 14, verse 22. Because all those men which we have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and not, have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. See it. 
but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him and followed me fully. Him will I bring into the land whereunto he went, and his seed shall possess it. God sees in this man that he knew the Lord, believed God. God gave him, of course, the opportunity to go with Joshua into the promised land, keeping his promise to this man. And we know that Caleb, I believe, was 80 or 82 or something. And he was just ready, all fired up to ready to go and conquer the land, kill the giants. And why, how was he able to do that at 82? Because he had a mighty God that was with him and strengthening him and bringing him to conquer the land and getting the land that God had given to him, specifically the land that he had received. We sing the song, I Want That Mountain, where the milk and honey flow, where the grapes of Eskel grow. So when you sing that song, you think, what's an Eskel? That's talking about this passage of scripture. Caleb indeed took his mountain. Ladies and gentlemen, we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. Giants are not defeated without going into battle, but in and through Christ, victory is sure. Christians don't believe that you can't win. Don't believe that it's an insurmountable things that come in your life we never know when, when a day is going to bring forth in any of our lives. None of us do. And you may look at it as an insurmountable situation, but I will tell you that God will meet the need in your life and has already prepared you for the battles to face. He's already given victory. I look back over the years and realize the, what I would say, the personality, personality and the nature of my wife and to be able to care for Clinton all those years and just keep the family right on track telling all of us what to do where to go how fast to do it no, I'm joking but she just kept it on track was she able well no it's too much but with God I see Aaron and I was uh, commenting to my wife the other day how God had specially made this woman for Ken. Especially to make his life a possibility. We have this woman of God and this man of God that have now labored for 11 years. Faith in God has sustained them all this time and especially put them together to be physically strong to be mentally strong, to handle the impossible in their life that has come. Young couples and families, things may come into your life. We never know what a day might bring forth. You don't have to live in fear. God will sustain the situations that come in your life and is, either is preparing or has already made preparation that you just don't even know is there. These folks going into the promised land said, it's way too big for us, we can't do this. And they were right. But they discounted God. You can fall, you can fail, you can quit. If you discount God in your life, and you'll never rise to take the land that God has for you. You'll never rise to the blessings God has for you because you're living in doubt. And we see these giants that when they came back, God told Joshua, you'll, you'll face every battle, you'll win, and you'll conquer this land, and you won't have to lose a man doing it. Well, that's, quite a, that's quite a battle deal there. As we know, they lost one battle, the Battle of Ai, a battle that they entered in was sin in the camp, and they couldn't win the battle. Because of that, one battle, and I believe they lost 30-some men in that battle, perhaps 36. Joshua was mortified because, God, you said that we would win every battle, but they lost one. God couldn't be in that battle. But they went through, and they conquered the land, and they took the land through Christ. I can do all things through Christ 
which strengtheneth me. Giants will never be defeated unless you go into battle. But in and through Christ, victory is sure. Are you trying to live your life today? Trying to figure out how you're going to manage everything? Trying to figure out how you're going to finance everything? I know many of you are facing challenges that you haven't figured out yet. Maybe they're financial ones. But you've got things that you're facing that you, you just can't quite wrap your brain around and you can't figure out how they're going to happen in your life. How are we going to get this done? Some of the families now with the expenses going up so much, I know it's a struggle. You're probably trying to figure out, Lord, how are we going to do this? Uh, just to, even going back and forth to work now is a great expense. But God will see you through. God will see you through. Trust God. I don't know what the, I don't, I don't know what the, the giants in your land, in your life that you see that are just too big and you say I don't know how I'm going to face those giants you can face them through Christ one day at a time he'll meet the need he'll meet the expenses he'll meet the strength that you need even though it looks impossible I've seen so many people in my life I see their situations and I think man I, can, I just can't even imagine how you could manage that but I can't do it because I'm not in their situation. But through Christ, he will bring you through those situations. Eventually, they came into the land. They conquered it. Unfortunately, some, the most of them died that were there, all those that were over 20. Forty years later, all of them were gone. They literally knew that their days were numbered. You can do all things through Christ, which strengthens you. Trust him. Victory is yours. The giants aren't too big. They're not too big. But in your own strength, they are. Let's all stand together and we'll have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I don't know what the giants are in the minds and hearts and situations of the people always here, but Lord, you do. Father, we look at situations that we, we just can't fathom are manageable for other people, yet God sustains them. And Father, when things come that seem to be out of control in our lives, may we not step back in fear, but may we step forward in faith and trust God with these great challenges that come into lives. And we never do know what a day brings forth, but we know we have a great God that will bring us through those days. Thank you for this wonderful story in the word of God. Thank you for Caleb. Thank you for God who promises were kept and the land did go to the children of Israel, not by their own might, but by the power of God. Thank you for the many ways over the course of years, Father, that you've met the needs miraculously in so many ways in this church. And Father, many miracles that have been seen over the course of 40 plus years here. Thank you for it. May we walk in faith as we go forward. Thank you for the tremendous uh, folks that are here tonight, Father, that have given and been faithful. Some have gone through some hard times. Some, Father, are rather new. And I pray, God, that you would just, uh, as, as challenges of life come our way, come to our church, come to individuals. I pray, Lord, that we would trust you in faith, that we'd be encouragers of those that are going through trials, helpers, sustainers, as God would use us to Help sustain one another and pray for one another. May we be faithful on all sides of this things, please. We ask it all in the name of Jesus. We'll have our invitation.